over 500 videos in the last 14 years, I've just made a huge switch to DaVinci Resolve as my go-to video editing software. In this video, I'm spilling everything I love about DaVinci Resolve and everything I can't stand. Let's roll the intro. Okay, so you're probably thinking, what made you ditch Premiere Pro for DaVinci Resolve? Here's the real deal. YouTube is just one part of my world. I'm also a filmmaker and video editor. A while back, some of my clients threw me a curveball. Hey, can you edit in DaVinci Resolve? I was like, Resolve? Nah, I'm all about Premiere Pro. But they nudged me to try it out for their project. So I gave it a try and started making my YouTube tutorial videos. And holy shit, it blew me away. It was like another world. I'm breaking down the biggest things I love and hate about DaVinci Resolve, putting it head to head with Premiere Pro. The number one is speed. Resolve just gets things done faster. DaVinci Resolve feels noticeably quicker, whether it's playback, editing, or exporting. Everything flows smoothly. Compared to that, Premiere Pro can feel sluggish. Don't get me wrong, Premiere helped shape my editing journey, and I respect it for that. But when you put them side by side, Resolve clearly has the edge. Rendering in Premiere often takes ages, and the interface tends to lag. Even something as simple as dragging and dropping clips can test your patience. Plus, the occasional crash in Premiere can really throw off your workflow. With Resolve, things just work fast and reliably. So less frustration, more work. The number two is audio ducking. Smarter and less frustrating. Audio ducking really comes in handy when you're making YouTube videos or doing voiceovers with background music. It automatically lowers the music volume when vocals kick in, so the speech stays clear. DaVinci Resolve handles this beautifully. It does the ducking automatically without using keyframes. Just select your settings and it adapts as needed. Premiere Pro, on the other hand, relies on keyframes for audio ducking. It works, but it takes more time and feels a bit clunky. Personally, I'm still not that comfortable with it. Once you've added the keyframes, it's hard to make changes. If you move or trim the music, you usually have to start over. Resolve is way more flexible. You can change the timing, move clips around, and even swap the music, and it still ducks the audio correctly. Set it once, and it just works. Number three is built-in transitions, customizable and time-saving. DaVinci Resolve comes with a solid collection of built-in transitions that are way more customizable than the ones in Premiere Pro. You can easily adjust things like angle, stroke, ease in and ease out without having to repeat the same manual steps over and over across multiple videos. Yes, I know you can create presets in Premiere Pro, but honestly, why go through that hassle when Resolve already gives you powerful transitions out of the box? It really comes in handy when you're doing repetitive edits and it saves a ton of time. This might not be a big deal for some of the editors, but it made a huge change in my workflow. In Premiere Pro, if you want to fade out audio, you either have to add an audio transition or manually set keyframes. It gives you full control, which is great, but it also takes several steps to get it done. In DaVinci Resolve, it's way simpler. Just grab the edge of the audio clip and drag it to create a fade. That's it, quick, clean, and done. And if you want more control, you can fine tune the fade using the Curve Editor. It's a small feature, but when you're doing this across multiple clips, it saves a lot of time. Number four is user interface, better as compared to Premiere Pro. DaVinci Resolve offers an easy to navigate user interface, unlike Premiere Pro. In Premiere, if you want to open a panel, you have to go to Window and then find the panel you need. Kinda annoying, especially if you're switching a lot. Like say you want the effects panel, but you also want a nice wide timeline. So now you're hiding, showing, hiding, showing. Of course, if you've got multiple displays, that's a lifesaver. But let's be real, not everyone has the luxury to afford a setup like that. Now in DaVinci, boom, click to open, click to close. That's it. No menu diving, just click, click, click. Everything's neat, snappy, and where you need it. All the useful panels are right there, chilling, so you don't need to stress. And hey, speaking of multiple displays, that perfectly sets us up for the next one. Number five is user experience, smarter use of multiple screens. Now, don't get me wrong. Premiere Pro is pretty flexible too. You can drag any panel anywhere, put the timeline on one screen, effects on the other, do your thing. Sounds great, right? But also kind of messy. Like most of the time I end up with a laggy interface and all the panels are just floating, 
not even fully maximized, just randomly hanging out on the screen, it doesn't really use the extra monitors properly. You'll notice these weird empty gaps and wasted space. Honestly, in the last 14 years, I never paid attention to that. But then I tried DaVinci and boom, it all made sense. With DaVinci, if you have purchased the studio version, you get proper multi-display support. You can keep your video preview locked on one screen and your timeline on another. Everything fits perfectly and feels organized. It actually uses the full space like it should. And once you see that going back to floating chaos in Premiere, yeah, no thanks. Number six is subtitles. Simple to use, powerful in action. This is my absolute favorite feature of DaVinci. The subtitle tool is just chef's kiss when you're making captions for your YouTube videos. It works amazingly well and gives like 99.99% accurate results. It runs smooth, keeps the words clean and organized exactly how they should be. For example, if I say Adobe After Effects, it knows those are proper nouns and keeps the capitalization. It even nails the punctuation. Meanwhile, in Premiere Pro, nah, it's like 80% accurate if you're lucky. It misses words, messes up punctuation, randomly forgets to capitalize the first letter, and often doesn't get your speech right. I literally have to go line by line, fixing every error. But in DaVinci, most of the time it just gets it right. That alone saves me so much time. And trust me, I hate working on subtitles. It's my least favorite thing in the entire editing process. So when a tool just nails it for me, that's a win. This feature alone is probably the reason I'm sticking with DaVinci Resolve from now on. Also, the subtitle designing process is straightforward. I like how many options it gives you to customize the look of your subtitles. So, there are the pros of the DaVinci, but not all software is perfect. Let's see some of the cons. The first con is Dynamic Link. Dynamic Link is one of those features I really, really love. In Premiere Pro, just select your clip, right-click, replace with After Effects Composition, and it does the magic. I don't need to export, import, or jump through any hoops. Once I make my changes in After Effects, I just save the file. Yup, just save, not render. And it updates instantly in Premiere Pro. That connection, it's seamless. No waiting, no exporting, just pure flow. Now DaVinci Resolve doesn't have this kind of cross-app magic, and it makes sense. They're different companies and technically competitors. I know DaVinci has Fusion built in, which is kind of their answer to After Effects. But here's the thing, I've spent over a decade with After Effects. It's home. I'm not ready to fully switch to Fusion yet. It's node-based, and honestly, that's what kept me away from learning Nuke too. Not saying I'll never learn it, I will. Definitely, just not today. Second con is fixed user interface. I know I already said DaVinci has a great user interface, and it does. But like everything, it has its own pros and cons. One of the cons, the interface is fixed. If a panel is placed in a certain spot, it stays there. You can't move it, can't drag it somewhere else. And sure, you'll get used to it pretty quickly, but sometimes I just want to set things up my way. In Premiere Pro, I can customize the layout however I like, dock a panel here, float another one there, resize it, snap it, basically total control. It's not a huge deal in day-to-day -day editing, but still, I miss that freedom. It's like living in a rented house where you can't rearrange the furniture. Everything works fine, but sometimes you just wish that you could move the couch closer to the window, you know? The third one is, DaVinci Resolve can be hard to learn. Unlike Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve can be a little tough to get into, especially if you're just starting out. Some tools you'd expect to be front and center just aren't. There's no traditional text tool, no select forward clips tool like we have in Premiere. A lot of things are hidden deep inside menus, sub menus and options under more options. It's powerful, yes, but it's not always beginner friendly. In Premiere Pro, everything is laid out nicely. Need the text tool? Boom, right there. Selection tool, right there. Subtitles, yup, right there. You don't have to dig around, you just get things done. DaVinci, on the other hand, feels like a toolbox with too many drawers. It has amazing features, but finding them, that's the tricky part. I remember in my first few days with Resolve, I couldn't even figure out how to add text. Had to go on YouTube and watch a full tutorial just to get one line of text on the screen. Not saying it's bad, just saying the learning curve is definitely steeper. And the con number four, some options don't make sense. Okay, this one's weird, so I often add transparent video clips on top of my timeline, like logo intros, animations, that kind of stuff. But have you noticed this strange thing? 
The first frame of the transparent clip makes the whole screen darker. Why does that happen? My format is correct. My method is correct. The file is fine. But still, boom, dark screen. After a lot of trial and error, I found the fix. You have to right click on the clip, go to change alpha mode and manually set it to straight. Why? Seriously, why is that the default behavior? Why doesn't it just read the transparency correctly in the first place? Maybe there's a technical reason, maybe there's a history behind it, but honestly, I don't get it. If you know why this happens, let me know in the comments. Not gonna lie, it'll help me learn too. So these were all the points that stood out for me after switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. Some were surprisingly awesome, and some, well, not so much. I'm not saying one is perfect and the other is trash. Honestly, both are powerful in their own ways. But for me, especially when I'm editing After Effects tutorials or videos, DaVinci just makes the workflow smoother. Let me know in the comments, are you thinking of switching or are you staying loyal to Premiere Pro? If this video helped you even a little, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't, and share it with a fellow editor. All right, see you in the next one. Until then, good luck and peace. Oh,